Hey everybody, so I have previously done a video where I talk about stats a good bit in my how to evaluate players video. Um, but I did also get into a lot of other things in that video and I've gotten further questions and sometimes people who are new to baseball have some general questions about stats. So I wanted to make a couple more detailed uh, videos about stats. This one's going to be about stats that I look for um, in, in batting for hitters, batter stats. Um, and then I'll do another one eventually on pitching stats too. Uh, I don't think fielding stats is worth a whole video, although I guess I, I should do that at some point too. So this is kind of a supplement of how to evaluate players and it's especially geared towards um, people who are new to baseball and don't know the different stats, although hopefully I'll get into stuff that uh, everybody kind of um, can learn from or appreciate or disagree with and tell me I'm an idiot. Anyways, uh, so I just want to say, you know, I'm going to say why some stats aren't good and I don't pay attention to them. I, I say that with the caveat that all stats tell you something, right? Uh, but the, the question is what stats tell you the best and most accurate info. And I, really, I prefer and most concisely um, when evaluating how effective a player is. So, you know, when you're looking at a game box score, let's go ahead and go to my team schedule. When you're looking at a box score, and this is also when you're watching a game on TV, although this, this has started to change, uh, it average home runs and RBIs are the thing that are always shown to you. It's what in a box score in the newspaper. It you, you know, it used to be what every TV broadcast would tell you when a guy came up to bat. That Like I said, that has started to change some. While all three of these stats do tell you something about a hitter, none of them are really worth paying attention to when you're evaluating players from a management perspective. As a fan, sure, whatever. But don't make player decisions based off of any of these stats. I'm going to tell you why. So start with batting average. Batting average is simply how many hits uh, a player gets per at-bat. And so if you have three hits and 10 at-bats, you have a 300 batting average. And... That's a pretty good batting average, but it doesn't tell you much more than that. So I could have, I could be three for 10 and have three home runs, whereas the guy hitting behind me could be three for 10 with three singles. We're both hitting 300. I am a way more productive player in those 10 at bats than the guy with three singles. I was, I read a book one time called Beyond Batting Average, uh, which tells you, which basically says that saying, you know, what batting average tells you is basically how many hits somebody has. It's the equivalent to saying, well, this guy has four pieces of money and this other guy has four pieces of money. So they're just as wealthy, which is absurd, right? Somebody might have four $100 bills. Somebody might have four pennies. They have very different possibilities and very different wealth because of the type of money that they have. So that's why batting average is insufficient. It also doesn't count walks which are very valuable. They're as valuable as a single, and it just doesn't even count them. Uh, home runs, you know, they're fine. The home runs, generally somebody who is good in average home runs and RBI will be a good player, but it's just not the best way to tell that and doesn't drill down. So with home runs, uh, you know, certainly a player who hits a lot of home runs probably is going to uh, is going to have contributed to your offense in a meaningful way. But a guy could hit 40 home runs and strike out 45% of the time or something, you know, probably not that exaggerated, but that's probably not going to be all that productive of a player because he's doing uh, it's home run or nothing. While home runs are very valuable, you want to dig deeper than just home runs. And RBI are just so team and situational dependent that, you know, it depends on what the people in front of you in the lineup do and if they're on base when you come up that uh, to where it, it's really not a good, it's it's an evaluation of did this player come up with men on base a lot and did he get hits, I guess. But, you know, there are much better evaluations that more evenly level the playing field across teams and across opportunity to tell you is a good hit or good. So that's kind of why I don't like batting average home run or RBI to evaluate my players. Um, next, we're going to go into... Um, on base percentage, slugging percentage, and OPS plus, which I think are all superior stats, but still not ideal. So on base percentage is essentially batting average, but it counts walks is the simplest way to tell you. Uh, so that's good. So on base percentage is better than batting average, but it still treats four pieces of money like four pieces of money, no matter whether they're pennies or hundred dollar bills. Uh, slugging percentage is a, a jump up from that for sure. Slugging percentage essentially differentiates between the different types of hits. So to simplify it, a single is worth one, a double is worth two, 
and uh, triple worth three and a home run worth four. So that's why you see the slugging percentages here are much higher than the batting average and on base percentage. And the issue with slugging percentage is that a home run is treated as four times more valuable as a single when it's not actually that much more valuable than a single. So it unfairly weights hits too much as you go up. A double is not worth double what a single is worth to a team's offense. So slugging percentage, of course, superior to batting average. And then you can combine them and get OPS. That's that's a great stat to use. But again, it has all those shortfalls built in that on base does, on base has and slugging percentage has. So it's not the be all end all. But if you like OPS, I recommend using OPS plus. Any plus stat that you see normalizes the stats for run environment and for uh, it rec it, for sorry, lost my train of thought there. And for park factors. So say you know uh, offenses change across time period. So here I've got the baseball reference stats up, and you can see on base percentage. Or let's look at OPS. In 2020, a 740 OPS was the league average, right? So down in, let's see, go down to 2004, and a 763 was league average. So you can see the 23-point average just in, the, uh, in, in what the league average is, 782 in 2000. So when you're looking at it, you can't just look at an OPS and compare a player even within your own sim, because you don't know what the offensive environment was. You know, here, a 740 OPS was league average. Down here in 2000, a 740 OPS would have been well below average. So that's why I prefer the plus stats. And what a plus stat does is here, um, if you want to look at this guy, Gunnar Henderson, in my sim, and just look at his major league stats, is it adjusts it for league average. So if He's 100, then he's league average. Here he's a 99. That means he's 1% below league average. So a 758 OPS was about league average. The next year he had the same OPS, and it was 2% below league average. So the, the offensive run environment was really similar. And then down here he had a 99, and it was 746. So the offensive environment has declined in my what that tells you. A 758 OPS in 2025 was the exact same relative to the league as a 746 in 2029. So that's why I prefer the plus stat. It, it, you can compare players across leagues, across parks, and across eras um, to where the run environment within your league doesn't make players look good that actually aren't good because you can just look at, well, how good was he relative to the league, right? So that's why I like plus stats a lot. OPS plus stat is a very good stat, um, but I want to get into this one Weighted runs created plus, I think, is a better stat. And to first get into that, I'm going to talk to you about weighted on base average, which you don't see. I don't have here. I think it's available in the game. I think you can put it in, but I just don't put it here because it gets too cluttered. And to be honest, I like some of these old Tommy stats because that's how I grew up. And I still use them as a, not as a barometer, but I still like to see them. But weighted on base average is a step up from all these stats. And I'm going to go to fan graphs here, which is a great resource if you, uh, are looking for a, let's go see if we can get this ad to go away without opening it, there we go. Uh, so weighted on base average, the reason why this is superior is like I was saying with slugging percentage counts a single or a home run four times as good as a single. Here you can see what each thing is worth. So a single is, uh, so let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, so a single is worth 0.89 runs and you can go back and look at linear regression models and see if you want to see how, how they came up with that. But essentially, a single is worth 0.89 run, runs to a team, and a home run is worth 2.10. So over double the value, but not four times the value that slugging percentage gives you. So that is why weighted on base average is superior. If you're going to do one catch-all statistic for offense, I recommend using uh, weighted on base average over most anything except weighted runs created plus. What weighted runs created plus does is it essentially takes weighted on base average and it adjusts it to park factors. It adjusts it to era. It does the same things that OPS plus does uh, to OPS. So there's also a weighted runs created stat, um, which so 
And you can see here, there's not often a lot of difference between runs created plus and OPS plus here, 85, 90, but here they're the same. They're off by three. So they're very similar, but I prefer runs created plus to be more precise. Um, and so that really runs created plus is the catch all stat that I use to evaluate a player. There's no one stat that's going to tell you everything, but if you're going to use one, I think one weighted runs created plus is the best because one, it's adjusted to park factors, league factors, era, all that. And you know, 100 is league average and 104, 4% above league average, 116, 16% above league average. So that's just, it's so easy to keep track of that. And so what is a good runs created plus versus bad? Again, 100 is league average. I'm just kind of estimating here, but you know, once you start getting above like 115-ish, 120, you're working your way into an all-star type player and anything over 150 is just absurdly elite. I would say in terms of the bottom end, I mean, I try to have everybody be near league average. That's not always possible. If you have a really, really good defensive player, you know, catcher, center fielder, or shortstop or something, and they're hitting an 80 or 85 runs created plus, that's fine. You know, you can see this one season, uh, Henderson put up an 85 runs created plus, but he still put up 2.2 war. So, you know, that's fine enough if they're returning some defensive value. Anything below 80, I would seriously start thinking if that hitter is worth whatever defensive value they're bringing. Um, which we can get into about war in a second. One other stat that I would just uh, pay attention to is uh, strikeout and walk percentage, how much player strikes out and walks. Again, these are not era adjusted, so they can vary wildly by era. And so I, you know, I would say with the K percentage, if a guy's striking out over 30% of the time, you might want to look into that. You don't want a team. You can have some guys that are over 30 as long as they're returning value in other ways, but you don't want a whole team of that. With walk, same way, you know, if you have a whole team of guys under like 4%, uh, that's going to be tricky. But, uh, you know, I'd say average is around 8 to 10%, probably, probably more like 7 to 8%. Um, and, and anything over like 12 to 15% is excellent in the excellent range. And so that's another stat to keep an eye on. Again, individual players can be outliers there. You just don't want your whole team to be outliers on the bad side of things. And then last, we're going to get into war, which is wins above replacement. This is how many wins this player added to your team over a replacement level player. The replacement level player is not an actual player. It's just uh, a concept of the typical player available for you in AAA to call up as a replacement. So replacement level player. So if a player is 0.0, .0 then he is totally replaceable and you can find guys just as good in the minor leagues. So one thing to keep in, keep in mind with this is war is a cumulative stat. So as where OPS plus, if a guy plays in 50 games or 150, if he has 100 OPS plus, he has 150 OPS plus, whereas war is a counting stat. The more you play, the more you accumulate. So two war in 80 games is not the same as two war in 150 games. Uh, and so just to kind of, I think war and OPS plus are probably the two stats I look at when I'm looking at, or sorry, war and runs created plus are the two stats I look at the most. So just to kind of give you a scale here, two war is a league average player. Uh, and again, we're talking about guys who have played close to a full season. If a guy puts up two war in 50 games, he's way better than league average. If a guy puts up two war in 150, 160 games, or a two war pace in fewer games, he's a league average player. Uh, if a guy is below two war over a full course of a season, I'd say that's more like a bench player, a utility player, not necessarily, you know, you can probably replace those guys pretty easily. Um, once you start creeping up around the four war territory here, 3.8, 4.8, those are all-star level seasons. Uh, you know, I, I think, mo you know, normally a guy, if a guy goes over four war, he's, he might not make the all-star, but he's all-star caliber. And really, once you start getting over six, 6.2, 6.5 war, that's a guy who's going to get some MVP votes. And anything in like the seven to eight world is just like the elite of the elite. So yeah, that's kind of how I evaluate hitters. Again, I'd encourage you to stay away from batting average, home run, RPIs. On base and slugging OPS are definitely a step up, but if you're gonna use those, I would encourage you to look at OPS plus. But in the end, weighted runs created plus is the stat to go with as well as war, but also keep in mind your strikeout rate, your walk rate. Um, yeah, if you have any, any questions about anything I covered, let me know. I know I probably covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time here, but uh, yeah, that's, that's all for on the stats that matter for hitters.